Hey. I'm a hacker. Now, to many of you, hacking might mean um, breaking into websites or stealing personal account information. But that's called cracking, and that's not what I do. Hacking is about taking things apart. But that's only half the story. When I graduated from AUB with my master's degree in 2012, I had the tools and the expertise, but I had nowhere to apply them. I truly believe that to create what I wanted in the world, I had to leave my local community, go off to a faraway country with far better established research institutions, with far better equipped labs to study robotics. But later that same year, at the Share Beirut conference, I was introduced to Lumba Labs, Beirut's very first hackerspace. But what is a hackerspace? Well, many of the members will be the first to tell you that there's no general definition of one. The hackerspace is the product of the community that creates it. Everything from the number of engineers to coders to scientists to designers, from artists to poets, the ratio of men to women, the ratio of design to engineering to art tools. Everything's a variable, and it all depends on the community. But hackerspaces do have something in common. They're generally physical spaces with physical tools that are shared by a group of like-minded but very diverse individuals who come together to tinker, collaborate, share knowledge and expertise, but all in the spirit of curiosity. Now, I have to admit, this was strange to me at first. I mean, this place was neither an art collective, nor a startup incubator, nor a co-working area. But I eventually realized what sets a hackerspace apart from those other places. See, those other places aim to persist beyond the community. But a hackerspace? A hackerspace is the community. It's not just a rented area. It's a product of love. And it only exists because its members wake up in the morning caring about the space and caring about each other. Enough to take time out of their busy days to create what they're passionate about and help others do the same. Now, it was a novel idea to me at the time, but it wasn't new to the world. You see, hackerspaces in this modern sense were popping up in Germany in the 90s. And they were based on certain ideals. Openness accessibility, the free dissemination of knowledge and information, as well as the promotion of decentralization and the true belief that tech, art, and science can help create a better world. These can be summed up as the hacker ethic. And it's important to note here that the hacker ethic wasn't about a group of individuals following a creed behind closed doors. No, it wasn't at all. It was about having a conversation with society at large about transforming the way people think and interact with one another and with their own ideas and with tools to make that happen, all in the context of the hacker ethic. And I guess the idea caught on because by 2007, there were about 30 to 40 hacker spaces in the US alone. But then after that, the number grew exponentially. By 2012, there were about 1,000 hacker spaces, over 1,000 hacker spaces, active all around the world. And eight of them are in our very own region. And I dare say that they're already having an impact, especially on the way we're perceiving production and consumption. See, the current system we live under today is based on consumption. We have these year-long cycles where our products degrade and become obsolete very quickly, and then we are forced to buy new ones. But this wave of hacker spaces hitting the region is transforming this passive consumerist society into a do-it-yourself culture. And there's something inherently reward rewarding about making. I mean, it gives you an increased self-confidence, self gives you a sense of agency, you can affect the world around you, and a sense of accomplishment, like I did something. And I'm not even talking about anything grand here. It could be as simple as cooking your own food or mending your own clothes. Mm -hmm. But the resources that hackerspaces provide, like open source software, open source hardware, and personal fabrication methods, these things allow us to use, modify, and 
and use the creations of others in a way that's never been thought of before or in ways that we haven't even begun to imagine yet. All in your, in your very own space, in your very own community. And there's something about taking back the gift of making that comes with hacker spaces. And I, I have to tell you, it happens really naturally, really organically. I mean, I don't want it to sound daunting here that, oh, we can't make everything. You know, it sounds very challenging. I'd rather just buy it. We're not talking about things like that. We're think, talking about things that arise because of curiosity. For example, one day we'd be talking about something like wearable computing. And we'd wonder, why isn't there anything that we can wear that helps the visually impaired sense you know, their surroundings better? And we'd wonder, can we, can we pull something like this off? We'd head over to the whiteboard, we'd brainstorm, you know, we'd get some ideas going, and we'd do it. we will say, we'll do this. Next day, someone brings a belt over. We'd pull out some sensors from our closet and we start tinkering, exploring, just because we can, because we're curious. Can this be done? A week later, we're walking around the lab, blindfolded, wearing the sensor belt, trying to see if it works. Can we get around the lab without hitting anything? A week after that, we're having a lightning talk about whether this thing succeeded or failed and why we think it did. And the important thing to note here is that it seems like this hackerspace provided an environment for the organic emergence of ideas and projects. Now this whole time I've been talking about ideas and projects and you know making. So it's natural in an environment where everyone seems to be an entrepreneur with a startup working out of some community space that you talk about a business plan. But it seems that words like love and care, passion and curiosity don't make it into a lot of business plans these days. And when I tell people that Lumba Labs sustains itself through voluntary donations at free workshops or arbitrarily low and high membership fees, well then people don't think it's going to last very long. But as famed tech writer Clay Shirky once remarked, Ask yourself not, what is the business plan? But do the people who like it care about one another? And that turns out to be the better predictor of longevity. And I'm glad we're going to be around for a while. But because, especially since we have so, much, so many, all these tools for creation, and because of the ideas and projects that come out of these places, money has a way of finding its way to us. For example, here's one example. This maker bought 3D printer here. It's one of the most commercially successful products to come out of a hackerspace. It came out of New York's NYC resistor hackerspace. It's a personal fabrication device. It can sit on your desktop. You can see how small it is. And it literally turns three-dimensional designs you have on your computer into materialized 3D objects. Another really successful product to come out of a hackerspace came out of All Hands Active from Ann Arbor, Michigan. See, a couple of hackers there wanted to make neuroscience accessible to children at a young age. So they created the RoboRoach. It's basically an electronics backpack. <laughs> it's an electronics backpack that students can attach to cockroaches' nervous systems and literally turn them into your little remote-controlled minions, and make them go left and right. It's really interesting stuff, and it teaches neuroscience and electronics along the way. But well, those are just a couple of projects out of many. But the important thing to note here is that these projects were the byproducts of hackerspaces and the collaborations that happen in them, not the original intent. And I think that's new. See, when I joined Lumba Labs, I became part of a local, regional, and global community that wanted nothing else but to be a part of something interesting. And that model of agglomerating care, passion, and curiosity into something that's stable, long-lasting, and productive that's new, and it's popping up all over the world. And I'm glad to say it's popping up here, where we, I dare say we need it most. The Arab Spring saw people rise up trying to democratize their governments because they wanted a greater sense of agency in the way their political systems were run. This maker movement that's sweeping the region is democratizing the process of manufacturing and giving us power over the means of production. And I, the thing is, in Lebanon, I think that's very important. Because we missed the bus on the Industrial Revolution. 
we've been based on agricultural and service sectors for as long as we can remember. But at the dawn of the 21st century, with hackerspaces popping up around us, we finally have things like open source software, open source hardware and personal fabrication that we can give to the creative class, to the academic class, to the technical class. And that way we can keep our best doers, makers and thinkers here in the country to drive innovation. I decided that I don't have to leave. And you don't have to leave either. So when I said that hacking was about taking things apart, it was only half the story. You see, it's what you do with the pieces that really matters. And so I invite you to go out to the social space outside, work with some Lego, go check out the maker space, and think, what can I build? What can I make? And who can I make it with? You see, for me, it all started last year. But for you, it can all start here. Thank you.